peru shu peru 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 tu peru tu peru tu peru 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 magi amanda Oh, May, welcome to my home. I love this home. It's like a second home <laughs> to me. That's funny because your home is also like a second home to me. It helps that we live in the same neighborhood. Ooh, so ooh. our homes have similar flows because they were built around the same time by the same builder. They flow. <gasps> they flow. They flow around in a circle like every single 1960s ranch. When I was looking at houses, I remember being like, you know what I don't like? When I get trapped in a room. What do you mean? <laughs> what was your realtor doing to you? <laughs> She's constantly cornering me. No, when you're like walking through a house, I like, the, I like when rooms have two doors. Oh, well, what about bedrooms? Yeah, they have to have two doors. But like some bedrooms don't have. No, I'm just kidding. Not two. bedrooms. I'm oh, just crawl out the like window and spaces. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 This one's kind of flowy. It's got a great flow. Yeah. Well, you could run around in circles in this house. Your kids do run around in circles in this house. I think that's what I was envisioning. I was like, you know, you got to have more circle spaces. I found a video of when I moved in of them just running back and forth in here mm-hmm. and doing like prat falls, like going like, ah, and acting like they were going to fall. And it's kind of hard to tell if they were really falling, but it was very dramatic. So, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the fam. Yeah. <laughs> before all these catches were in the way. Hmm, you want to <clears throat> clap? Give it a clap, a clip, clip. we got a lot to talk about. One, two, three. Hi, I'm Maggie. And I'm Amanda. And we're sisters. In law. law, we're watching Suits one episode at a time. It's a show so nice, I've watched it twice. And a show so great, I'm watching it late. Thanks so much for tuning in. Maggie's never seen it and Amanda's obsessed They don't wear fancy suits, they are casually dressed They are sisters-in-law and they got a show About a law firm drama that aired a few years ago Only suits fans, only suits fans Only suits fans, only suits fans Only suits fans, only suits fans This is season four, episode nine, Gone, and season four, episode 10, When in Rome. Well, they say Rome wasn't built in a day. But Pierce Inspector Lit was. Oh my <sighs> gosh. <laughs> Maggie, I texted you and said, oh, I need to know when you're watching this because. And I thought it was about episode nine. Yeah, because you're like, I hope Grammy shows up. I was like, I just want to know like when it's happening. Because mm-hmm. I'd gotten a text from our friend Whitney, who's a couple of episodes ahead. Mm-hmm. I was fast asleep one night. Woke up the next morning, bright and early to all caps, Pearson, Spectre lit from her. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. It's a coming. Yeah, I thought it was about episode nine, which ends with Lewis getting fired, which we will go into. Yeah. Uh, but then I watched episode 10. And then I, shook. I was shooketh. Yeah. Big time. Did I you need like, a day? I felt like Lewis was yelling at me. Yeah, I, I needed a day. Uh-huh. I needed two days. Right. I took yesterday off. Did you? Of of suit stuff. You, you, you did? Yeah. Because like, need you needed a, a break? I needed a day. Yeah, I get that. And now I need to get back into it. We need it. to get back into it and talk about it? Yeah, we got to get talk about it so, so I can go intense. home and I can watch episode 11 because I'm like, oh, I don't uh, know. You got to know. You got to know. You got to know. I got to know. I got to know. I got you a shirt. Thank you for that. And I need to tell you a story about it. Okay. Well, I've had the my shirt is a Pierce Inspector lit shirt. Yeah, the shirt is a Pierce Inspector lit shirt. But Thank here's you. the thing: I've had this shirt for many months, and about three weeks ago, I was out on my walk, and I knew that I was going to be stopping by probably. Mm-hmm. And I got around the bend. Okay, I came around the bend and was three houses from your house <gasps> in this Pierce, Pierce Inspector, Inspector lit, lit shirt, and I immediately covered my hand over my shirt. And I was like, do I go back up around the bend? Because it's like such a long way to get back home and right. change clothes. And then I ran in front of your house with my hand covering this shirt, <laughs> which is like right over my chest, and then ran straight back up the street and then turned and went to my house, changed clothes, then walked back down the bend again in a different shirt and stopped by to say hello. <laughs> you psychopath. <laughs> 
know. Of psychopath behavior. That's like, I have to return to the closet. <laughs> it is. I like, can't simply walk past. I must return. I have to return. So that there's no suspicion. It's not like, what What were you wearing earlier, Amanda? Like, why- I thought I saw you walk by. Like, no, no, it must have been another person. person. It, yeah, in a different, yeah. Thank you for my shirt. I cannot wear it. I'm going to wear it tomorrow. Okay. I'm going to wear it. I've worn it to the grocery store and people have nodded and they're like, like your shirt. Because they know. Shirt. I mean, they know. They know. People know. They're like, oh, I didn't yeah. know. I didn't know. And I saved you from knowing with the t-shirt incident. I'm so glad you ran away from me. <laughs> yeah, I did run away from you. and ran right back, walked into your house like it was no big deal and said hello. <laughs> like literally, I'm surprised you weren't like, God, you're like, it looked like you're out of breath and glowing from that run. It is funny the kids, anytime they see a brunette woman walking a dog, they're like, it's Aunt Nana. <laughs> and you're like, it's <laughs> not Aunt Nana. But maybe it was this time. Could have been. I'm like, Aunt Nana would never run clutching her chest like that. <laughs> yeah. She would never. never or, or just run. <laughs> she would never run. <laughs> she would never run. Um, I'm going to read a brief. It doesn't do this performance justice. I'm going to read it anyways. Good. All right. If Lewis Litt was looking to ride the most elaborate roller coaster of emotions, he got a first class pass in episode 9 and 10. Woodall doesn't take his confession seriously, but Jessica sure does, and she tees up to fire him. But Lewis loves this firm, his home, so much that he joins forces with Butch and the Sundance Kid one final time to fight Woodall. Harvey puts up a fight to keep Lewis at the firm, but Lewis makes it easy for everyone. Speaking of everyone, they're all calling in favors for Lewis to try and get him a job, and nothing seems to stick. Even Sheila Amanda Sass doesn't fall for Lewis's attempt to win her back. And isn't it ironic that Lewis is the reason that Mike got to come back to the firm, and now Mike is the reason that Lewis will become named partner of the firm? Honestly, there isn't a Shakespeare play that can hold a candle to the performance that Rick Hoffman gives as Lewis Litt of Pearson Spectre Litt. Amen. He, ugh. This, I thought he didn't win every Emmy. Did he not win every Emmy? I don't know. Emmy? We need to look that up. A little he, Emmy history here. He deserves all the Emmys. What a performance. Dude. Just like wild range in these two episodes. Yes. And wild. They should call him has, hashtag wild range Rick. Yeah. <laughs> let's. Oh, he's like a wild range. Wild Rick. range Rick. Let's get old wild range Rick on the show. Rick Hoffman is <laughs> got me huffing and puffing, man. Yeah. About this performance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we have to just dive in. Let's dive in. You're going to start with season nine, and you're going to kick us off with uh, everything that happens. Before. It's all like episode BC. Nine. Yeah, ep- season four, episode nine. It's all for us. B, C, and A, C, before credits, after credits. Yes, yes. That's how we look at that's, it now. That's that. Okay, so before, because that song changes everything. Yeah. You, it's you think like a, it's going one way, and then that song doesn't. happens, and you're like, Grang, it bah, doesn't. Bah, bah. Okay, so Harvey marches into Jessica's office to confront Lewis, and he is wearing just a vest. And it's dark. It's like a whole dark suit. He yeah. kind of looks like a caterer. He does look like a caterer. That's okay. He kind of looks like somebody from Party Down. He oh <gasps> what a great a good show. show yeah it's back uh, or it was didn't yeah it, it was it's back I don't think it's back anymore mm-hmm. and Jessica is being the voice of reason she's calming everyone down because Lewis is like I have to confess and Harvey's like get get out of here you dumb 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 yeah and so Jessica is like listen I'm not gonna fire you but she's totally gonna fire him yeah she's gonna fire him right because she needs him to calm down. Mm-hmm. Then we see Rachel. She's cleaning up for Mike. She's making things absolutely perfect. She already has six bean burritos for him. And he has, she has his family photo album out. Like, she is doing a very good apology to Mike because she knows she messed up. Mm-hmm. And so she's showing through actions that okay. she cares and loves about him. So uh, normally I wouldn't deposition you in, before the credits. But mm-hmm. when you say this is a big apology as your notes indicate here. Mm-hmm. Do you mean that because just she's doing actions like she's showing or because there are six bean burritos in the refrigerator? Uh, yes, and both. Okay. I yeah. mean, six bean and cheese burritos that she has picked up and she said she would pick them up every single day until Mike comes home. Okay. That's commitment. That's a lot of money That's on bean and cheese burritos. Bean and che- well, bean and cheese burritos are like a buck, right? Yeah, sure. Like probably at this, in the, the inflation, they're probably like 80 cents. Probably 80 cents. Yeah, she probably said Well, if she paid what dollars. she makes, 80 cents on the dollar then she probably only paid 80 cents okay, hey, okay, there you yeah. go she's doing like she's like i'm 
being thoughtful. Mm-hmm. I'm not just taking you back and acting like things are normal. Like she's clearly laying out the red carpet for him. And then Mike's like, yeah, it's good to be home. But he's totally just staring into space. Mm-hmm. He's overwhelmed. Yeah, he is. So Donna has canceled her date. She, she needs to know what's going on here. Harvey's like, Lewis put the whole firm in jeopardy. And she's like, well, okay, Harvey. You sort of hired Mike Ross. Yeah, you kind of did the same thing. So she calls him on that. Harvey immediately goes to meet with Forsman and threatens to turn him in to the SEC mm-hmm. about something he did 12 years ago. But Forsman is like, I'm not stressed about that. Yeah, but he's also did say you wouldn't, meaning like, there's wouldn't. no, he wouldn't believe it. Like, so there's a little bit, like he's acting like he's not stressed, but he's got to be like a tiny bit stressed. H- Harvey? No, Forsman. Because he was like, you wouldn't. Oh, yeah. I don't think I don't think, don't think Forsman was stressed, think stressed at all. Okay. I think he knows that Harvey's not going to turn him okay. in. Okay. But Harvey looked stressed, yeah. and we rarely see him look stressed. And it could be stressed because he's dressed like a waiter, like a caterer. It, it could be because he probably got asked for drinks. Like, he probably has a whole bunch of orders that he's He's got to get over to also, table seven, and exactly, he doesn't remember them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so then we're after the credits, AC. Donna is in the break room with Lewis. He is being very emotional. She's empathizing with him. He's like, I know I'm going to get fired. Just tell me, though, what do you think? Is Harvey planning to fire me? And she does tell the truth. She says, to my knowledge, Harvey is not planning to fire you. Because Jessica, Jessica is, is planning planning to fire to Harvey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is such lawyer speak. Okay, Donna. Yeah. Mike has a plan B for Cahill. So they're actually getting Judge Hopkins to agree to let them depose him, him being Cahill for malicious prosecution because like you said muddies the waters mm-hmm. right yeah it's going to make because then cahill mm-hmm. is deposing them but he has to prep for his deposition it's going to be a great plan mm-hmm. lewis goes to katrina and he's like listen don't worry MBD. Har- harvey's <laughs> not gonna fire me i apologize yeah. and she's like you idiot mm-hmm. have you seen any mafia movies and he's like, no, that's not a genre that I watch. Right. And she's like, you're about to get You're about to get fired. Yeah, you're about yeah, to get yeah, yeah. shot. They're going to the use back. you as long as they need you, and then you're about to get fired. Mm-hmm. Duh, Lewis. Duh. So Jessica goes into Jeff and says, I need all the dirt that you can get on what all. That raises some red flags it, for Jeff. Yeah, Moore. it does. Um, Harvey did not collude with Mike Ross. Like, she stands by that, right? Yeah, she's doing a Donna. She's doing a Donna. It does make Jeff Malone go, what's going on here? Like, not only are you my boss, but you're my lady friend. I need you to tell me the hot goss, right? Mm-hmm. And he he's a little suspicious. Yeah. And then we cut over to Mike, who has to prep Rachel for depositions against Cahill. And uh, this is not good. This was Harvey's idea. And Mike's like, this is not a good idea. Right. And he's like, you got to do it. And I'm like, this is a horrible idea because Mike is going to have to ask Rachel about everything. And in fact, later we see him doing this deposition Mm -hmm. in the apartment. And of course the affair comes up Yeah, because she was sleeping with next to Mike Ross, Mm -hmm. who's on the other side of the table, working with Logan, Mm -hmm. who is her ex-lover, who she kissed while they were doing this and told Mike about it. So it's like, this is so messed up. Right. This is messed up. And it gets even messier because Mike is obviously getting heated while he is doing this deposition. And Rachel calls him nasty. It's real bad. So during this nasty, vicious, and cruel deposition in their apartment... Rachel's like, you need to move on. Mm -hmm. You need to get over this and move on if we're going to build our lives together. Right. And later they have this very sweet apology where he comes and talks to Rachel and he's like, I'm very sorry for how that happened. Um, I was doing my job, but I don't need to be vicious and cruel. Right. 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 Meanwhile, back in the bathroom, we're doing a little hand washing like we like to do at Pierce Inspector, right? We got clean hands, no sickness, right? Mm -hmm. It's real fresh and real clean. Donna and Jessica are in there and they're talking about Lewis and Donna's like, hey, you've got to trust him. And Jessica's like, no, dude, like if you threaten me like this, then I'm going to I'm going to fire you. Right. Donna tries to make the case that you let Harvey clean up his messes, let Lewis clean up his mess. And Jessica's like, no. Because Lewis does not clean up his messes. He makes a huge mess. He rolls around and fucks shit up. Yeah. Like he cannot, he is not capable of cleaning up the mess. Because honestly, Lewis goes about things in a very different way than Jessica and Harvey do. Mm -hmm. Jessica and Harvey think the same way. So of course they think that's the right way to solve problems. Mm -hmm. While Lewis has a very different approach. And so seeing him solve a problem would be very stressful for Jessica. Oh, absolutely. 
And he has a record, Jessica Lissett, of all the ways he's messed up. Yeah, she can just rattle it all off. Mm-hmm. You know, I highlighted this here because Jessica threatens to fire Donna. And you see the look in Donna's eyes like, oh, shit, she's about to maybe fire me. Like, we don't normally see that with Donna. Mm -hmm. So my depo for you here is, um, have you ever thought you were about to get fired? No. Okay. Not once have I ever thought I'm going to get fired. Wow. Okay. Have you ever almost fired me? No. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't think I'm, I just don't go about my life thinking that I'm going to get fired. Yeah. But like something, you didn't do something where you're like, oh, I might get fired for that. No, I don't think I have. I think I've been like, oops, that's a big boo-boo. And Mm -hmm. I might get in trouble for that. But I've never been like, and then they would let me go. Because I'm like, no one's going to let me go. Yeah. No one would let me go on that. You know? Yeah. Everyone makes a mistake. Yeah. Also, though, I've just always had really good bosses. That's fair. Thank you for saying Who like work with you and like, you know, like making a mistake is normal so yeah. they would help you solve the problem or let right. you solve it yourself honestly you think about how hard it is to fire someone yeah no i know i'm in hr you're in hr and so you know like you have to do a lot of stuff to get fired because yeah. they're gonna try and coach you out first right mm-hmm. they're gonna try and get you to quit first mm-hmm. but to for someone to be like you're fired you mm-hmm. have to do something that's more of a pain in the ass to untangle Mm -hmm. than having you untangle it and feel bad yeah you have to really like do some real bad yeah so Woodall is in there getting deposed about jim pembry pembricks jim something yeah jim jimmy p let's call him jimmy p who was someone that he exchanged 1200 emails with about we need to come up with a crime that will put this person yeah. away. Ooh, man. And this little tidbit of information about Jimmy P came from our good friend, Jeff Malone. Yes. So this is bad news. Yeah. The deposition ends. Uh-huh. It shows that malicious prosecution is something Woodall does. Mm-hmm. So he goes straight from this deposition. Now we're in the courtroom. Lewis is there. He's ready to stand next to Jessica and Mm -hmm. go after Cahill and fight for what's right and show her that he can solve problems. And she's like, get behind me. Yeah. Harvey's standing next to me. You should not even be here. I don't even want to see you. This is when they try to use that evidence from the deposition with the judge Mm -hmm. to say, listen, Cahill is best friends with Woodall. Mm -hmm. Woodall has a history of malicious prosecution. Mm -hmm. He is totally coming after us because he really genuinely is. He even Mm -hmm. whispered after the deposition ended. He's like, I am coming after you. I know. Like, he's a bad dude. Yeah. But then we get this bombshell dropped by Cahill. Right. And he's like, oh, you think my relationship with Woodall is something? How about Jessica's relationship with Jeff Malone. Jeff Malone, he's not working alone. Jeff Malone, he's coming home to Jessica Pearson's home. (laughs) Anyways, Lewis didn't know that Jeff Malone and and Jessica were officially boning. Boyfriend, girlfriend. Right. Getting that T. Yep. That FT. That 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 French French tongue. That French tongue. Mm -hmm. That French tongue. And so this is huge news. And I'm like, how did he even know that? Which they are also wondering. They're like, how did they know that? I don't know. Like, they got in cars together and stuff like that. Like, it's not that weird. Like, But I've Cahill him- says he was he was tailing her. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't tailing Jeff Malone because Jeff Mal- tailing Jeff Malone when he worked for the SEC would be illegal right. or something, right? Because he was a federal blah, 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 something, something. Mm-hmm. Tailing Jessica Pearson, totally fine. So Cahill was working to try and collect evidence mm-hmm. and discover this relationship. Right. I thought he had an informant or something, but he didn't. No informant. Mm -mm. Lewis then confronts Jeff Malone in his old office. He's like, I miss my old office, Mm -hmm. Lewis's old office. And he genuinely apologizes. And then he drops into Jeff's lap, assuming that Jeff knows all of the things that Jessica knows because they're boyfriend, girlfriend. Mm -hmm. He tells him, yeah, I really screwed the pooch on this dirty deal. And I think I'm going to get fired. Right. Can you help me? And Jeff's like, yeah, I can help you. But Jeff didn't even know about the dirty deal. No, he didn't. He had no idea. No, but it's Jeff's way of, like, finding out about it. Yeah. And Jeff says this to Jessica. He's like, oh, yeah. Lewis assumed I knew because that's what relationships are. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Jeff Malone makes me kind of mad in this episode. Why? Because 
he like in that moment when he's like Jessica you should have told me about about this and she's like i'm protecting you in case you get deposed like you don't need to know all the information that i know about everything and he's like i should know everything i should know every single secret you've ever had i should know about all the law firm secrets i should know about like anything that's going on in your life and it's like jeff malone this isn't about you like this is a huge problem for the firm a lot of people don't know what happened yeah a lot of people don't know because it's not in their line of business. Like, stay in your lane, Jeff Malone. Yeah. He cannot keep these things separate. Well, and also, they're just boyfriend-girlfriend, so it's not even privileged for him exactly. to know Exactly. So, like, right. it creates actually a huge problem for him to know. Yes. If they're so, married, it's different. Right. But I'm just like, Jeff Malone, like, why are you so, like, jumping on her nuts about all this stuff? Yeah, get up her nuts. He's, like, very, like, I should know everything that's going on in the firm. It's like, you just got here, my dude. Mm-hmm. You just got here. Yeah. Chill out. Chill out, senior partner. I mean, how long have they even been Jeff Malone boning? I don't know, because we don't know about the time before we knew about him. Right. Like, we don't know, because she's so secret. Remember, she was married, and Harvey didn't even know yeah, about she's it. she's so secretive, but I'm just like, I, it doesn't seem like they've been dating for years and years and years. Yeah. So now it's Cahill's turn to depose... Oh, Mike, Mike Ross. Ross, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he talks about he's you know such a horrible hire, but um, if 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 Harvey says he's you know you know such a horrible hire, then why it's like there are no resume out there for him because when he got fired or when he left the firm, you would have thought that every single firm would try to pick him up and then he would apply. When he got fired from the banking job, yeah, from the banking job, and from, yeah. and not one person even took an interview knew. with him, like even knew. And so Cahill's like, y'all are hiding something. Something's going on. Right. And then they're like, we didn't make any money. He goes, okay, well, that tells me that somebody else did. did. Right. Mm -hmm. So Uh, he's just a hound dog. And he he walks out and he's like, you can't hide money from the SEC. And I meant to look this up beforehand. The reason this is highlighted here, it's not really for a deposition, but like I wanted to understand the logistics of like, can the SEC just go see how much I've got in my checking account right now? Can they just go look? I don't even know what, I thought the SEC was a football thing. <laughs> no, it's the Security Exchange Commission. I'm uh, like, what? I'm like, why, why is this football company just... Perfect timing, because uh, football kicked off tonight, you know? I'm just kidding. I know it was some sort of regulatory thing, but yeah, I, I just know. like. I, I mean, I guess they can. How does the SEC actually get I your money? That, I think it's just... Or find your money. Mm, they can look through deposits into your account if you're audited. I mean, I feel like the SEC is not coming after only Suits fans. They're coming after um, multi-million, billion-dollar corporations. Well, who's to say we aren't, Maggie? You're right. We have been selling merch like hotcakes. Yeah. Be sure to head to onlysuitsfans.com to get yourself one of And we were able to secure a dot .com and not a dot .co or an I, a dot .io or a dot .biz. So. You can trust. Your your money is going to... Us. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess you can't hide money from the SEC. I guess you can't. But I'm a pretty good hider. So then uh, Katrina, she shares the script of the deposition uh, with, Lewis. with Lewis. She right? immediately like... You got to read this. Like they're on now. They're on to you. They're going to start digging. And mm-hmm. so you know, Lewis is a little freaked out. Totally freaked yeah. out. Yeah, as he should be. He should be for sure. Jessica goes to visit Cahill to find out how he knew about Malone, and he says, "Of course, I've been following her, which is abuse of power." He was like, "You know, you sent L- Lewis Lit guy in to confess, and it didn't even like mean anything." And yeah, a, f- a bogus confession. A, a bogus confession. Yeah, that's it. Jessica is always so great at like maintaining uh, like her composure. She is so calm, cool, and collected. And you can never really tell that um, she's frazzled. Yeah, so she's frazzled because she's like, the fuck? I-, I told Lewis not to do this. Yeah. So she goes back and she's like, hey, what's going on? Like, you shouldn't have confessed. Well, I also was laughing out loud when Kate Hill was like, yeah, you send Lewis Lid in to do some bogus confession. And I'm like, Lewis went to confess to a real crime mm-hmm. and no one even believes him. I know. Like no one even believes him. I know. He just cannot be taken seriously. Yeah. And I think it's because he has a reputation of like fucking shit up sometimes. So, yeah. and that might be why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Jessica believes that he did confess. And yeah. she's so oh, mad for because sure. she explicitly said, do not confess, Lewis. Yeah. Do not do that. Do yeah. not confess him. Yeah. Yeah. She real mad. Yeah. But then Lewis is like, yeah, but I, I didn't talk to Cahill. I talked to Forth- uh, Woodall. To Woodall. And as soon as I mentioned Forsman, he like let me go. He like shuffled him on out of the room. Was like, whatever, okay. Which gets Mike and Harvey being like, why wouldn't they take this seriously? This is so odd. And then why wasn't Forsman 
nervous when Harvey said he was going to turn him into the SEC. Mm-hmm. There's a connection here. So Some they have to figure connection. out the connection between Woodall and Forsman. Forsman. Dang. This is hot goss. It is hot goss. And so Mike and uh, Harvey are up all night trying to figure this out, and they're kind of stumped. And then Lewis struts in, no tie, no jacket, no it, vest. Never more handsome. Vest. Yeah, just kind of like he had just come, Casual. like he'd been in a wedding, you know, and had a little too much to drink and left his tie at the bar. Or something yeah, he was like doing that. like shout. Yeah, he was doing. He was definitely he was doing, dancing he to was shout. He was doing the cupid shuffle. Yeah, the cupid shuffle for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he was trying to like get everybody to like stay for one more song after closing time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. It's like no. He's like trying to keep the party going, take come it back on, to guys. the hotel bar. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's the lit look of Lewis Lit when he walks in. He looks in. just like that. <laughs> he does, and he comes in, and he's figured it out because he's the money guy. You know. And he explains to them that they had a deal with each other. Like, Woodall and Fortsman had a deal. Mm-hmm. And so... Uh, and Cahill doesn't know. And Cahill doesn't know. The only way this is going to work is that they convince Cahill that Woodall is dirty. And Woodall is Cahill's boss. So they have to go in and be like, hey, your boss, he he's dirty. dirty. And here's who he's dirty with. And you're going to have to turn him in. And I love this scene so much when they're all sitting there and like the sun's pouring in through that fake shower curtain that they have for their scenery, you know, because uh, it's a shower curtain behind them. I love, it. I love this scene where they're just sitting there like, we've worked real hard all night in these fancy suits. And, and then go they say, on into the SEC and get them. And they say, get your coat to get Lewis. Coat, Lewis. Uh, I love it. The three musketeers are back. Yeah. So then Cahill is in his office mm-hmm. and Lewis, Mike, Harvey, our three bros love are it. in there and they're like, listen, my dude. Woodall has something with Fortsman. And if you don't believe us, just tell him, like, hey, they think you have something with Fortsman. Tell me what's up. And Woodall walks in, and Lewis does that thing that he did back in season one that I love so much. He's like, oh, look, we're all here. Isn't this fun? Look at us. We're all in the same room. Like, I love this when Lewis gets, like, cocky. 110% confident that what he is doing is going to crush, and he is so cocky, and it's so great. And it's also, he's been up all night. Yeah, Those tend to night. happen when he's been up all You're right, night. closing down the bar at that wedding. Yes. Woodall is there and Cahill's like, yeah, they got this like crazy theory. So, and Woodall's like, oh, (laughs) but Cahill's like, "Uh uh-uh, no, no, bud. Mm -hmm. And he knows immediately. He's like, gentlemen, like, let me talk to my boss. My boss. Who's dirty. Who's a gonna get dirty. Dirty. Gonna get one of my money. It's about time for my arrival. And it's time for them to leave. Yes. So Lewis suggests in the lobby that Woodall should call Hardman to defend him, oh, which man. I thought was interesting. Mm-hmm. I was so like, maybe Hardman. No, but nobody better to defend a criminal than a criminal. That's what he said. Ooh, he's true, though. Line. It's true. And Jessica walks by, sees them celebrating. She doesn't, like, walk by close. She's behind that glass uh-huh. area. And in, like, the most regal jacquard jacket. It had the peplum. It's yeah, like a peplum, peplum jacket, peplum. but, like, the jacquard, like, material. Like, yes. Like, elegant. Like, like she's queen. going to the White House, like, correspondence dinner or something. Yes. Like, she's very, you know. Royal. Yeah. She looks regal as heck. Regal. Because she is reigning over there you go. everyone here. There you go. Harvey's like, I'm going to take care of this. But Jessica has already made up her mind. She shares all of Lewis's greatest hits, everything he's ever done wrong, Mm -hmm. and says that anytime she tells him to do something, he doesn't do it. Honestly, when she said this, I was like, this is Harvey season two. Oh, yeah. Good point. She would tell Harvey to do something. He would not do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, we already know that you tolerate that Mm -hmm. from Harvey. So why aren't you tolerating that from Lewis? Mm -hmm. He does a lot of other good things. His billables are incredible. Mm -hmm. But I digress. She has decided. Then this funeral organ starts to play. Harvey's walking down the hallway to fire Lewis because he's like, I want to do it. He's like, you want to fire him, but I want to say goodbye to my friend. Mm -hmm. And he's wearing all black. Yeah. Donna joins also wearing all black. They do look like they're either going to a funeral or they are working for Party Down. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And they walk into Lewis's office, but he has already written his obituary and his note of (laughs) Eloquent, to say the least. (laughs) It's a beautiful, a beautiful goodbye. Yeah. A beautiful tribute to the firm. Mm -hmm. He has quit. He says, your names are on the wall for a reason and mine is not for a reason. Please take care of my home. And you started texting me like one after the other. You're like, this show is going to suck without Lewis. I'm done. Take care of my home. Like, it was like a lot. I know. Because I was like, without Lewis lit, there's no joyful conflict. 
You know, like all the conflict feels so serious without seeing a little butt every once in a while. Yes, yeah, see a little loose lit butt. Loose lit butt. Mm-hmm. But uh, boy, howdy, <laughs> was the next episode all Lewis, dude? Thank goodness, and also wide oh range Rick. God. We got wide range Rick. Rick is just flipping his range all over the show. Yep. We just jump into this one, honestly. Yeah, and I'm just going to go off the cuff a little bit. Okay. This episode is all about Lewis being down on his luck, yeah. right? He is He's just down been, bad. Down bad. Down bad. He's just been fired from his favorite firm, the only place he ever wanted to work mm-hmm. ever in his entire life. A place that he would not leave in order to be with the love of his life, Sheila Saz. Mm-hmm. He has committed fully to Pearson Specter, and now he's just floating in the abyss. And he goes to Harvey because he can't get a job anywhere. Like, nowhere is hiring if you're not bringing a client, but he cannot bring a client. And he's like, I just need to bring one of my three people, right? Like, one of the three people that I first brought into the firm and I grew, I need to bring them with me. Let me have, like, one of them so I can get a job literally anywhere. Jessica's not going to let him take it. In fact, she also goes in to talk to Katrina because she's like, I'm going to give you a second chance, Mm -hmm. even though you're loyal to that guy. Right. You can now prove that you're loyal to me. Mm -hmm. And Harvey then goes to meet with Lewis because he cannot get him any of his clients, but he can get him a job in Cincinnati, which Lewis is like, no, 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 I'm not going to Cincinnati. New York is Rome. And I am a gladiator, and I will fight Jessica Pearson to yeah. stay in my city. Which is kind of ballsy, because he doesn't really have a lot of options. <laughs> so it's kind of like he needs to take what he can get. Cincinnati is a cool city, though. Is it? It is a cool city. Yeah. Okay. But it's much smaller than New York. And also, Lewis Litt is a Harvard grad, magna cum laude. Yeah, but can you imagine him crushing it? Like, nobody's business in Cincinnati? Yeah, but also, like, to be on the... Yes, and to be the in-house counsel... Uh-huh. For Procter & Gamble, like, sure, that's great. But Lewis has such a variety of clients and works his brain in and so he's many a different ways. Like, and he's yeah. a litigator. That's not the job for him. Yeah, That's like a sleepy job mm-hmm. for someone who doesn't want to be Lewis Litt. And Lewis Litt wants to work around the clock. Yeah, To be problems. clear, um, I know a few people who are in-house counsel for from very great companies. And so I don't think they're sleeping. Uh, no, it's a sleepy job in comparison to what Lewis is doing. That's fair. No, I, I mean, it's a hard job yeah. anywhere. And Procter & Gamble, I'm sure, has a ton of things to deal with. Damn. But it's all within the same funnel. That's fair. That's fair. And he wants diversity. Not wild range, Rick. Yeah, there. he needs a range. Wild range, Rick. Yes. So we see Lewis marches right into Jessica's office. And he's like, I'm taking my clients back. Mm-hmm. You better strap in. Except for... Katrina, Katrina has already contacted all the clients and he yeah. cannot take them. Yeah, she had to go and tell them all in person. Oh, yikes. That's so awkward. Jessica made her do that. I know. That's how she had to, that was how she hazed Katrina into yeah. being loyal to the firm. But he did say, I'm glad it was you and, and not somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, poor Katrina. Yeah. So Mike is super stressed about how quickly Lewis got fired because, mm-hmm. as we remember, Mike never went to law school right or even graduated undergrad Mm -hmm. so he needs a huge problem to solve so that he is indispensable to this firm right because he does not want to get fired right the problem that he gets is that sterling pharmaceutical is merging with pfizer which means that they will not be able to keep versa life which is a client unless i think they said we can round them down Mm -hmm. which means make versa life a little smaller of a portfolio Mm -hmm. yeah so But there's no way to do this. This is a huge problem. Mike is not going to be able to solve this. No, not at all. Mm -mm. So then Donna wants to have an emotional conversation about Lewis, and she wants to get him a job in Boston. So she asks Harvey. like She calls in a favor with Harvey to Mm -hmm. make a call to try and get him an interview to get him a job in Boston. And she meets up with Lewis Mm -hmm. at the gun range, Mm because that's where he goes when he's mad. Right. Mudding when he's glad. Shooting when he's sad. Yes, which is, you know. Ooh. But okay. of course, Donna can handle a pistol. She was like best shot in yeah. her hometown or whatever. Right. She's like, go get Sheila Sass. Go to Boston. Go Use get your girl. opportunity. Yeah. Yes. So kind of like a Goodwill Hunting. Gotta go see a better girl. Gotta go see a Except better girl. Except they're leaving Boston to go do that. And, you know, she's, she's going, she's to, going Boston. to Boston. She's going to Boston. Yeah. All right, then we see Sheila Sass. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so great. Right. Thank goodness. Something good coming out of this. Except Sheila says, smells the desperation on Lewis. Yeah. And she knows. The order was important. The order of, did he leave the firm to come to Boston? Or did he leave the firm and then decide, I'm going to Boston? Right. 
and he's like, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's like, like, it's all, I mean, it's all kind of the same, it's, <laughs> but it's not the same at all. No. And she's like, get out of here, get out of here, goodbye, which is so depressing to me. Ugh, that broke my heart. Yeah, I was kind of sad for him. Mm-hmm. He can't really catch a break right now. Mm-hmm. So Mike still has not solved the problem. Mike goes to talk to Donna. They've been clearing out Lewis's office in that cursed Daniel Hardman mm-hmm. office. Mm-hmm. Donna's like, I'm going to take it. Mike's like, I want to take it. Mike doesn't have any way to break down Versa life. And so Harvey's like super mad because Lewis never showed up to this interview in Boston. Mm-hmm. And Mike doesn't know how to beat the FTC. He doesn't know how to break down Versa life. Right. So Mike decides he's going to take the box. Yeah. Harvey says to Mike, because he's like, how's it going with Versa life? And Mike goes, I'm all over it. And he goes, all over it means you don't have dick. Mike calls in a favor with his maybe future father-in-law, you know, because Robert Zane thinks he's coming to ask for Rachel's hand in marriage, which is not true. He's ca- coming to ask for a favor. He said, would you please hire Lewis Litt? Even though he can't bring you clients, let me show you his billables. He's great, right? Mm -hmm. Tries to get, you know, Lewis an interview with Robert Zane. And then he tells Rachel, and Rachel's like, no, it's not a good idea, because that's why I didn't go to him for law school money. If my daddy gives you something, he's going to expect something. Yeah, he's always waiting for the shoe to drop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before Mike goes to talk to Rachel's dad, he does go visit Lewis, Mm -hmm. and he mentions this key he brings him his box of goods. And they're and, kind of sorting through them. And he's like, you can tell me how you got this key. Is that your first case? And Lewis is like, stop trying to cheer me up. I just want to be left alone. And Mike's like, okay. And he leaves him alone. Right. Then he goes to Rachel Zane's daddy. Yeah. Lewis then interviews with Robert Zane. Mm-hmm. He does. And it goes pretty good. Pretty well. They have a lot in common. Mm-hmm. And, the, you know, he's like, you got to go get somebody. Right? Like, you got to bring me a client. If you can't bring clients with you, you need to go get a client, mm-hmm. right? And that's what Lewis has been trying to do. He needs to kick in a door and break his partnership with Jessica. Yeah, he too. has to. Like, he needs he to ha- show that he is loyal to Zane. Yeah, he has to. And Lewis says, like, you're no different than Jessica, uh-huh. which makes me think, like, okay, Lewis doesn't want to work for Robert Zane. You don't think, though? Well, I was just like, ah, like, maybe Lewis is like, this isn't going to, this isn't good for me to work for someone like this. Or do you think maybe he just would rather go back to work for Jessica because it's like dance with the devil that you know, as opposed to the one you don't? Yeah, but I mean, he's like, you're no different than Jessica. So dance with whatever devil's going to all the the bills. Yeah. Dance with the devil. Bunch of devils. Dance dance with the devil. So then Katrina runs into Lewis at a client that he is trying to take with him. Mm -hmm. She's like, you should not be here. This is no good do not do this let me give you some information with someone that you can take yeah she spills the The beans beans on versa life she's like listen we're gonna have to drop them anyways because we can't figure out a way to scale them down right there's this merger with pfizer and sterling pharmaceuticals so we have to drop them you tell them that we're they're gonna get dropped you pick them up this is a win-win right it is not gonna be a win-win well it is a win-win initially Initially, he yes. gets them. Initially, he gets them. He gets them. Donna tells Harvey that Lewis is going after Versa Life. Mm-hmm. And then Harvey runs into him. He's like, I signed them. I got it. Thank you. I'm going to take them because you can't even have them. And right. Harvey is pissed. He's so mad. So they have to come up with another idea to get Versa Life back. But I'm like, this was such a good move, Lewis. Right. This is a great move. Yeah. And this feels like a win win, right? It. Yeah, I guess. But then again, Harvey's trying to not drop Versa Life. He's yeah, he doesn't want to. Wanna, he doesn't want to be like, oh yeah, sure, you can have them. Like they, Versa Life is really big, right? Right, and so they have to go to make a deal. They got to figure this out, and they need someone who can buy this portion of Versa Life. Right, and Jessica thinks Mike is the one that gave Lewis the hint. right. Yeah. Hint. Oh yeah, she's super. She's mad like, about Mike it. is the one who did this, and Mike is like, he would shit. never. Yeah. Right. And she's like, oh yeah, Mike. Well, you don't even know Mike. No. And then it turns out they got to go make a deal. Mm-hmm. with Walter Gillis, mm-hmm. whose son died of drug addiction. And this pill that Versa Life is making, this medicine that they're making, helps people with drug addiction. They just don't have enough money. Mm-hmm. And Walter Gillis, while he doesn't have his company anymore, he does have money, and he could fund this and help. And so they're making a deal with Walter Gillis. Gillis which is the whole reason the SEC was all over them to begin with. Yeah. I was like, this is kind of messy. Yeah, it seems like we're going back to people who could mm-hmm. make this even more convoluted. But they end up making the deal, and now Pierce and Spectre can keep them. So Mike goes to visit Lewis again at his home to tell him face-to-face that they have Versa Life back. 
Lewis says you're a brilliant lawyer, mm-hmm. and Mike says you're a brilliant lawyer. Yeah. Here you are. You're like summa cum laude. Uh-huh. You're order of the quaff. Right. We got to sit down and talk about that key, right? Like, let's yeah. talk about let's talk like about your. This key. Let's talk about all your stuff. Right. And this was. Uh, we'll find out soon. A big boo boo. It was a big boo boo. Harvey Her- goes and tries to get Zane to keep Lewis, even though he can't bring Bruce to life. Yeah. And he's like, take take him. He's like, you're gonna, uh, you'll, uh, I'll owe you. I will owe you, and that's great. And here's something that I know: it never hurts to have that too too many favors out there. Mm-hmm. So he's like, sleep on it, and then and then you know, get back to us, right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't understand this um, where you okay. said I don't, I didn't just fall off the turnip truck, Mike Kamala okay. Harris okay, okay, Ross. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I wrote on this quote. So then Mike goes to talk to Jessica, uh-huh. and he's like, she's like, good job. Yeah, she's like, good job. And he goes, you thought that I did that. Mm -hmm. You thought that I told Lewis about it. And I just want you to know I didn't. She goes, oh, you you figured that out. And he says, I didn't just fall off the turnip truck, which was his way of saying, like, I didn't just... I didn't just fall out of a... I'm not a dum-dum, right? right? Mm-hmm. And then that made me think of Kamala Harris's... You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? Oh, okay. All right, I see where you got that. And I was like, oh, look at this. Cut it out. Cut don't, it out. Don't keep it in. No, I love it. I love it. So Jessica goes to fire Katrina, but gives her the option to resign. Because mm-hmm. once she knows it's not Mike, she knows it was Katrina. Mm-hmm. It's kind that she gives her the option to resign. Mm-hmm. It's much easier to go get a job. You can't file for unemployment, but let's hope that at her money, the money she's making, she's been saving and she's going to be okay. Yeah. And then she's like, well, that's okay. I'm going to go work with him at Robert Zane. And mm-hmm. Jessica says, oh, you don't know, sweetie. We got Versa Life back. Yeah, we got Versa Life back. He's not going to Zane. Yeah. So Katrina's face is like, I don't have a job. I don't have a job. Yeah. Mike and Harvey are going, they got to dinner and they are like it next level banter at this dinner so it's kind of crazy banter. honestly like it's wild it's about prostates it's about pussy it's about we haven't seen this kind of uh pmp banter if you will prostate and pussy banter maybe ever ever with them but like it's like next level he keeps leaving to to go check call donna. to call, call donna which is like i mean man do you know have text yet in 2013 yeah this is like 2014 he just keeps stepping out to see if robert zane's called about hiring lewis yeah Meanwhile, Lewis has gone up to Pierce Inspector mm-hmm. and confronts Donna in Harvey's office. Yeah, he's just waiting in there. Donna's like, "Hey, what's up?" And that freaking key, yeah, that Mike kept talking about, is from the Order of the Quaff. It's one of the three things you get when you're Order of the Quaff at Harvard. And I spelled Quaff Q A F Q U A Quaff. Quaff. Uh, 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 so, oh my God, the scene. Lewis just looks at her and he's like, Mike doesn't forget anything. He would have gotten a key because that's what you get from the order of the quaff at Harvard mm-hmm. when you were in the top 10% of your class. And Mike was allegedly in the top 10% of his class, mm-hmm. but he never got one because he never went to Harvard. He is not in the yearbook. He didn't know about the order of the quaff. His credit report says he was in New York when he was supposedly graduating. You're the one, Donna, who told me not to talk to Sheila about it right. because you only cared about you and Harvey and Mike, and that's why you told me that, and that flipped things out with me and Sheila and made me think I was the idiot, but I'm not the idiot. I was right. And then he's like total scorched earth. Yeah. He's so mad. Then he's like, I'm going to go talk to Jessica. Donna picks up the phone, calls Jessica, so she gives her the heads up. Yes. Lewis walks in. Jessica turns around, and then he's like, I want to see you walk the perp walk. And he calls Jessica on all her double standards because he's like, listen to this. I messed up. I made a Uh boo-boo. I did not hire someone who never went to law school. And that happened right after he made senior partner. And then you made him named partner. You crazy, psycho, double standard woman. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, well, tell me what you want. I'm going to make you say what you want. Yeah. I'm not going to say it. I know what you want, but you have to say it. Well, he also says, I want you to tell me you're a liar and a hypocrite and that you're sorry. And she goes, I am a liar, liar. and I am a hypocrite, but I will not say that I'm sorry. I what? did what I had to do to protect this firm. Cold right? stone bitch. Yes. Yes. 
my headphones flipped off my head. I was rocking so hard. This this rocked me. This rocked me, shocked me. Double down locked you. Double down locked me. And honestly, I was like, what is Lewis going to do? What's he going to do? I was not, even though I know that all he wants is to be a name partner on that wooden wall in those silver letters, right? Even though I know that's all he wants. I did not expect him to say what he wants is Pearson, Spectre, Lit. I know. I did not expect that. (laughs) And y'all can't see this, but in our notes, this entire section here is in all caps. Like everything is in all caps. Because I was freaking freaking out. out. I know. Because I was like, first of all, Lewis has been feeling this for a long time. He's been feeling like there's a double standard. He had no idea how, oh, how big double of a standard it was. Double st- yes, he's like, this isn't just a double standard. This is like wildly, wildly inappropriate. Yeah. So Dude, he's not he's only evil. vindicated; he is ty- to the nth degree vindicated. Yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty unbelievable. Like that anger and rage at the end is justifiable because he has just been fired and he has been so fiercely loyal and he did make a mistake an illegal mistake it wasn't calling into question the entire ethics of the firm Mm -hmm. it was calling into question lewis lit ethics right but jessica pearson knows about mike ross harvey specter knows about mike ross donna knows about mike ross mike ross knows about mike ross this is all of the big heavy hitters at this firm know that Mike Ross is not a lawyer. I know. It's uh, it's pretty unbelievable. This is what I predicted in season one. I know, but didn't you predict it to be a little bit different version of like Pearson Spectre Lit rather than Pearson Spectre Lit, right? No, I predicted that Lewis would discover Mike. That's fair. Yeah. That's what I predicted. Yeah. And then I was a little worried that it wasn't going to happen, but it did. Yeah. Here's an interesting piece of trivia that I discovered a while back when I was watching this. About the Order of the Quaff. Harvard doesn't have one. Yeah. They don't have an Order of the Quaff. I I also discovered that. Oh, you did? I did. Because I was like, oh, what is the Order of the Quaff? And then I thought it was interesting that it started in the University of Indiana. Uh-huh. And then I was like, when did Harvard get their Order of they're the Quaff? They're one of the only ones, like, that doesn't have it. Right. And I think they're the only Ivy League who doesn't have an Order of the Quaff. And maybe Carl the Writer was trying to, like, stick it to Harvard, you know? Mm-hmm. You're like, look, you don't have one, but I'm going to put it in there. Yeah, but that's why Mike doesn't know, because it's not on Wikipedia. That's fair, it's not on Wikipedia. Like, Mike could memorize the entire internet, but he would not know that Lewis's key was from Harvard's Order of the Cloth, because that is simply is not it's anywhere not to be found. It's yeah. so secretive at Harvard yeah. that it's not even on the internet. Yeah, yeah. That's why. That's a good point. Thank you. You know, normally when we get on the train... They want to make sure you're of, of sound mind. So I want to make sure that you've been able to kind of come down from everything. I did, but then my blood pressure went up. Okay, again. if your blood pressure's up, I'm going to get you up in first class. You have a little bit of room to spread out. Thank you. If you Ooh. hop on down and take this train to Prediction Town, Here please. we go. Here we okay. go. What do you got for us? My first prediction is just what the fuck. That's the first thing I, the first thing I wrote, because I was spiraling. I was, I was for sure spiraling. Um, I think the very first shot of this next episode is going to be Lewis getting his name on the wall. Oh, the letters being put up there? Yeah, because they love to they love to show the letters getting nailed into the wall. Okay, okay. Um, I think Jeff Malone and Katrina are going to be sniffing around this shit pile. Sniff, sniff, They're going to be like, wait, what? Because is Katrina going to come back? Jeff Malone's going to be like, why is Lewis back? Why is he a named partner? Like, there's a lot of things questioning. And his lover's not going to tell him. And Jeff Malone is going to be really mad because... Mm-hmm. Jessica's not going to tell him, and he already is mad about things that do not concern him. And I think this is this is this could be the end. Yeah. Lewis, I think, is going to confront Mike and let him know he knows, and I think he is going to make Mike's life a living hell at the firm, um, like just kind of raking him over the hot coals. Mm-hmm. Like, I think this is that we are about to see a Lewis lit reign of terror, mm-hmm. because now he is in the right and yeah. he knows he holds all the power yeah yeah it's gonna be awful because we, we've seen lewis be horrible to associates when he holds all the power now he holds all the power over jessica harvey mike rachel donna right like he's gonna be a monster yeah 
they had to go back to Gillis, which I kind of mentioned. This is feels so small in comparison, but uh-huh. I feel like that opens Gillis up again. So, like, I don't know that that's done. Sheila, I think, will love that Lewis has his name on the wall, and maybe they'll have a few rendezvous. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then I think that we will need a flashback episode of Lewis in college and Mike with Grammy as a kid okay. and Harvey in college with Lewis when they get their keys of the quaff or whatever. Like, I think we need to see a flashback to see, but in simpler times. Okay. Yeah, you have some solid predictions, but it's hard to even, like, think straight after seeing all of that happen. It is hard to think straight. That was a lot. It was a lot. But I'm uh-huh. glad. I'm glad we got there. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be the last time that you're going to be like, your prediction will be WTF. I can tell you that. Really? Yeah. Well, WTF. Get ready. Get- There's going to be a couple more WTF predictions where you're like, wait, what? what? I Excuse could not. me? Oh, Excuse it me? Oh, my goodness. Thanks so much for tuning in. You can find us at OnlySuitsFans.com and you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube and listen to us on Apple, Spotify, or anywhere else you get your podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a review. And if you're looking for a sentence stem to start your review, you can start it with Pearson, Spectre, Lit, WTF. Yeah. Tell us. Tell us what you think. But tell also us, to talk about how great we are. Yeah. Tell us Tell us WTF. Yeah. What the fans. What's the fans. What the fans are saying about this yeah, episode. this is what the fans are saying. Yeah. What the fans are saying. WTF. What the fans are saying about this podcast is it is a five-star podcast. Dude, I can't wait. This is all getting so good. It's going to keep getting better. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. Well, okay I'm going to go home and watch it. Okay. In I'm my gonna, new shirt. I'm going to go to the step, five steps away and go sit on the couch and watch it. <laughs> okay. Okay, good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. <laughs>